Pants. Sorry, I just looked at the camera. <laughs> I'm here today with Allison, a consultant at Bain & Company. Thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here. This is a question that a lot of my friends have. What is consulting? Consulting is basically just helping business leaders make decisions around how to run their business, which is super, super broad, um, but also a fair, I think, representation of what consulting is because depending on the case that you're working on or the project, it can be super different because the problems you're solving are um, obviously very different in nature at different companies. What kind of problems do you help them solve and what kind of projects are they usually? It's a whole range of different projects. Um, so you might, you know, some of the projects that I've worked on was one, like turning around an entire business model for a company. Um, they saw that their sales were declining. And so we came in and we were like, well, like, Let's figure out how to change that. And that could have meant a number of things. Um, obviously, like sales increasing or decreasing is like a very simple issue, but then you kind of dive into that. And we ended up, you know, changing their business model to drive more revenue. Um, so that's just one example of like business model transformation. Um, I've also worked in private equity group, which at, at Bain, which is private equity clients. And so we help private equity firms decide whether or not to invest in certain companies. So that's a very different line of work than say another project I've worked on, which is helping two companies merge and, you know, figuring out if you have one company with these set of processes, this company with another, how do you merge them? And like, how do you make the most efficient business um, when you add two together? So yeah, those are just like some of the things that I've worked on, but that have been like very, very different lines of work, um, but all super interesting. What's the learning curve for all these new stuff? How do you pick up those things? There's definitely a, a learning curve. Um, and the great thing is like when you have a team of people that are fully dedicated to this project, generally there is like some expert or some, you know, partner on the case that is an expert in whatever you're doing. And so there's this time where you're learning from them, but you're also kind of just on the ground with your team all learning together. Um, so I would say like the first couple of weeks of a case, usually it's just learning time. And so you and your team are just every day, you, you know, learn something else and then you share it with the team. So it's a really, um, I guess like group learning. <laughs> it sounds like consulting is like taking classes and then you're learning bit, like and then some, you're doing the homework yeah. for the client basically <laughs> a little bit like when you kind of get dropped in a new industry yeah. um and you don't know anything about the industry you you definitely have to like ramp up and learn about that before you can provide any meaningful insights um so that's generally the first phase of a case you just read a bunch and learn and talk to experts and for these projects do you have like a set process like how long are these projects and like how do you know what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Sometimes it's more clear than other times. Um, generally, when a company comes to a consulting firm, they scope out the issue that they want us to work on. Um, that might be scoped for, let's say, a month of a you know team of five people to work on. It might be six months. Um, it might be scoped for even longer. Uh, a lot of the cases that I worked on started out with, you know, say, let's do a th two or three month project. And then it would extend if we felt like we needed more time to work on it or if we were kind of on a path and needed you know, more resources or something uh, to figure out a problem. So I worked on projects, you know, my private equity cases were three weeks long and then I was on another project for I think almost 10 months. So really, really ranges. <laughs> Dang, and what is the end deliverable that you deliver to your clients? Usually it just takes the form of a meeting and we essentially just kind of lay on them what we've been working on uh, and usually it's a series of meetings uh, throughout the project but you know one the first meeting might be you know here's the process that we're going here are the early insights do you have any say in which direction we should go in um, and then a later meeting might be hey we went down this path this is what we learned and then you know a final meeting might be like, this is our recommendation of what you should do. Now let's think about next steps that may or may not involve a consultant. 
Monday to Friday, what does that look like generally? And then we can dive into what a day at a client site might look like. Monday through Friday, I would say most travel, not most, but when you do travel, um, we're traveling, let's say, Monday through Wednesday, sometimes Monday through Thursday, uh, which means, you know, flight Monday morning, you go to the client site, you spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at the client site. Um, in, you know, in between those, you're at the client site during the day doing meetings with the client. I feel like I've said client like 20 times in the past five seconds. <laughs> um, but it's meetings both internally with your team as well as externally. And then, you know, my when you're traveling, it's nice because you have like team dinners and you get to know your team really well. Might head back to whatever city you're coming from. So New York on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the office. Um, Fridays are really fun because that's the day that like everyone's in the office. Um, Cause some teams travel Tuesday to Thursday, some are Monday, Wednesday, some are Monday to Thursday, but everyone's usually home on Friday. Uh, and so Fridays in the office are really fun and like high energy. Yeah, that's like a typical week. What does a typical day look like? This answer is very different on whether you're traveling or not. I actually had a pretty um, low travel uh, frequency in my cases. So when I think about my typical day, it actually looks very different than some of my colleagues. If I think about, let's say, like when I wasn't traveling and I you know, was just working on a typical case um, in New York. So I actually was working on a client who was based in New York, uh, which is where I my office is as well. So we would actually go to the client in New York, but we weren't traveling. So I wouldn't have to stay in a hotel. I just went back to my apartment at night. Um, but the typical cadence was I would get up around 7.38, head into the office. I was probably at the client site by 8.39ish. Um, have a little slow start to the morning where I can, you know, check my emails, have a few minutes to gather my thoughts, and then generally would do a check-in with my team at 9.30. And so this has been pretty typical of most of my cases. In the morning, we start out with like a daily check-in. We align on, you know, what we're going to work on for the day, any new insights, you know, where we should push on um, for specific, uh, I guess, different pieces of work. And then throughout the day, it's kind of working time, a mix of working time and meetings. So I might have a meeting with my manager on one thing and then work for a few hours, have a meeting with my direct supervisor, um, and then maybe a client meeting in the afternoon. Um, and then... Yeah, and generally on that case, we would all kind of head out around 7 o'clock. Um, most of us were based in the city, so we would commute home and then, you know, have time for dinner. And if there was more work to be done at night, we would sign back on from home. So that was a pretty sustainable, like, good cadence. What would you say is your favorite part about being a consultant? I think my favorite part is just the fact that what I'm working on, it like it changes and evolves um, so frequently that I never feel like I am bored at work. Um, if anything, I am overstimulated <laughs> and feel very challenged, which is which is good, um, especially for a first job. Uh, again, I was there before I moved to SF. Was there for two years and have done like. A whole slew of different things that I feel like you don't typically get to do at you know any job like a lot of times you're kind of scoped to do one thing so it's cool that I can be doing user research one day and then the next week am um, you know traveling and like having a meeting with the CFO and building a financial model and then the next week I'm like thinking about whether a company should invest in you know new technology or like self-driving cars or things like that and so I get to touch a lot of different industries and I get to touch a lot of like different types of work um, so I think that's like the best part of being a consultant it's that you get to see a variety of things really quickly in like a really short amount of time on the flip side what would you say is your least favorite work can be pretty unpredictable um, not just on like both on like the day-to-day -day as well as kind of long-term. Um, I remember like every year when I would plan when I was going home for Christmas, it was like unpredictable because I didn't know if I would be staffed here or if I was planning a vacation, I didn't know if I should book my flights ahead of time because I wouldn't know where I was coming from. So there's this like level of unpredictability um, both in the long-term and as well as like the day-to-day -day because it's client services. Sometimes, you know, we try to make our teams and our work as sustainable as possible, but Ultimately, sometimes there are kind of these like fire drills or emergencies where a client really needs something and they, they're counting on us to help them. Uh, so we do. And so sometimes that means, you know, you might get something at 5 p.m. and 
a client wants it at 8 a.m. the next morning, that might be a late night. Um, and so this level of unpredictability is probably the most frustrating thing. Where do consultants end up? How long do they do consulting for? And when they leave, why do they leave? And where do they end up going usually? When people typically leave, it's a little bit different depending on like what stage you are. So like associate consultants will leave for different reasons than say a manager. Um, the associate consultants, so I'm thinking of like people in my class or my age, um, a lot of them go back to school is one thing. Um, they might go get an MBA or a master's and something that they were interested in. Um, a lot of them go to private equity. So there's a pretty natural pivot from consulting to private equity um, and, or, or other finance roles. Um, some go to tech. It's becoming more and more popular and going into to roles there. Um, and just working for you know companies that they're interested in, uh, whether that's a strategy role, whether that's a product role, whether you know that's something that another role that they're interested in. Um, but people kind of find their passion and, you know, I, I know people that love food and after consulting, like went to w go work for restaurant groups um, or people who, you know, were really interested in like environmental sustainability and they go work for nonprofits there. So it, it really ranges. Um, but that's the nice thing about consulting is because, you know, you're learning a skill set that is applicable to a lot of different jobs and a lot of different industries. So they're kind of ex-consultants everywhere. <laughs> and if you weren't a consultant, what would you be doing? I think you could see myself going down two paths. So this is a little bit of a question of like, where might I end up? Um, slash where I would have gone if not consulting. Um, I think I'd be interested in like, one, doing something with like a product, like having a product related role and really like owning a product. And so whether that's at, you know, a different type of, a lot of companies I could think of I'd, I'd be interested in, but you know, probably something around either tech or retail or CPG, um, which is consumer products. Um, I like having, I like working on a product that is very tangible and that I can, you know, kind of envision the end user. Um, so that's kind of one path that I could have seen myself going down slash could see myself going down in the future. Um, and the other is relevant to why I'm in San Francisco, which is education. Um, I'm interested in you know creating opportunities or you know working in the education field um and that can look like a lot of different roles because that's pretty broad um and i'm kind of dabbling my feet here in san francisco working at springboard and loving it so far um so we'll see if you know that's something that's down the road for me too well cool. well that's all the questions i had Thank you so much for sharing all there is to know about consulting. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Of course. Hopefully it was helpful. <laughs>